Hello. Hello, I'm Christine. And I claim the Salt Throne. This is John. Today we are sorting all of the Game of Thrones characters into their Hogwarts houses. <laughs> My outfit today is inspired by Tommen, king of the extreme turtlenecks. <laughs> Tommen likes his turtlenecks wide uh, enough to give him a second chance. So I'm a Ravenclaw. I'm a Hufflepuff. Let's do this. Our first character on the list today, Ned Stark. The most Gryffindor y Gryffindor oh, yeah. I've ever had the chance to Gryffindor. Yeah, starting out easy. It's Gryffindor. <laughs> Catelyn Stark. Catelyn Stark. What did you say for Catelyn? I also put Gryffindor. I think she's a Gryffindor. Yeah. She's a brave lady. She's she goes for what she wants. Fierce and brave. She yeah. does anything for her kids, but in a better way than Cersei. Than Cersei, yeah. yeah. Robert, Robert Baratheon. Bobby B. Robert Baratheon is the king. He is the ultimate Gryffindor jock to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, <laughs> Gryffindor. Not a great king. He's a warrior. He's such a, like, peaked in high school kind of guy. Yeah, you know, yeah. he was the popular kid. And now he's just, like, a fat old drunk man. <laughs> Gods, I was strong. Rob. I have Rob down as obviously a Gryffindor as well. It's funny that in certain ways he'll take directly after Ned and be like super honorable to where like everyone's recommending he not behead someone. And he's like, no, we have to kill him because <laughs> it's the honorable thing to do. It's what my father would do in episode one. But then like he does opposite stuff too where he follows like love instead of the duties that he... I also think there's an argument though that he's doing the honorable thing, the loyal thing to the woman he's actually fallen in love with. Yeah, Cereal Pharrell. The first meal of Bravos. Cereal Pharrell is Arya's sword dancing teacher. Yeah. I have him down as Ravenclaw. He's so wise. I had Gryffindor slash Ravenclaw. He is very wise, but he was brave against when the... Uh... Yeah, Ravenclaws can be brave. Yeah. I'll say Ravenclaw. He has such a Ravenclaw vibe. He, he is very wise. What do we say to the god of death? Not today. Not today. Yeah. Khal Drogo. <laughs> Khal Drogo is another Gryffindor jock to me. Uh, what, see, did, what is he to you? I originally put Gryffindor, but then I'm like, I think Slytherin more, because he's really ambitious. I he, feel like he just wants to prove he's awesome. He wants everyone he wants, to think he's awesome. Yeah. But, and he's like loyal to Danny. Yeah. But he's also like pretty ruthless. Yeah, and but that's brutal. just the way of the, the way of the Dothraki. The Dothraki. But uh, he's like very ambitious in his wanting to be powerful. He had like never lost in combat. He had That's because huge... he's really jock. <laughs> <laughs> he's, so, he's jock AF. Mm, I'm standing by my answer, Slytherin. Okay, I think he's Gryffindor. Okay, wow, well, our first <laughs> disagreement. What do you think? It's Gendry. Who's Gendry again? Gendry. Who's Gendry? It's everyone's favorite character, Gendry. Who's Gendry? <laughs> he's the blacksmith. Oh, the random blacksmith that yeah. shows up again in season seven. Yeah. So Gendry is definitely a Gryffindor to me. He's, 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 he's Gryffindor. He's like a classic. Door. He's even got like the little bit of a chosen one thing happening. Sort of, like, yeah. He is the bastard the, that has been chosen for the sacrifice for Stannis. He's brave. He's stubborn. I think of him as the Will Turner of the Game because of Thrones. Because of the blacksmith thing? Because he's a blacksmith. And kind of getting dragged into this he, Yeah, this he gets dragged story. into big drama that he's just like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Renly Baratheon. The youngest brother of the Baratheons. My take on him is that he's a Gryffindor that doesn't have as strong of a will. Oh. And I feel like he was swayed by loyalty to his boyfriend. Because I feel like he was encouraged by a lot. What's his name? Lyas? Loras. Loras. To go for the throne. He was encouraged by Loras, and he wasn't really even thinking about it before. Yeah, but it he really wasn't. got in his head. He really inceptioned him. I mean, he seems, I think, on the outside as a Hufflepuff to me because he's very but kind. The thing with a Hufflepuff is kind. that he would never cross his That's brothers. That's a very good point. I think that this is a case of a Gryffindor gone a little bad. He's really he's, in love. Yeah. And he's doing it for him. And he's just in the wrong. Like, he, he has no mistake. claim to yeah. the throne. He seems like a good person. He's just in the wrong. Big one here. Peter Baelish. Littlefinger. AKA Little finger this bitch Shansha, the, Shansha. this guy is the face of Slytherin he's Some, everything good about it, Slytherins and everything bad there's something to be said for an argument for Ravenclaw because he's a very smart person yeah but cunning very calculating I, I'd say more but cunning no, and calculating I mean, which is a Slytherin I would agree yeah. that he is Slytherin Slytherins but are very my, smart my first thought was Ravenclaw but, but then I'm like, well, he's he's so You know who's ambitious. Ravenclaw? And Varys. We'll, we'll get to that, because I have a different opinion on that. So Varys. The master of whispers, the spider. I love Varys. I think he's a fascinating character. I, I, I really mean, like I like Varys. Littlefinger as a character, too. Yeah. He's very interesting. But I love Varys as a person as well. Yeah. I mean, we just watched an episode in season six where mm. we really see him at the top of his game. I wouldn't say manipulating, but getting what he wants yeah. from a person that he needs information from. And I really think it divides him from Littlefinger in the way 
say that he says, I like to give people what they want. I like mm -hmm. to help people. Yeah. And in exchange, you tell me what's going on and I will help you. With Littlefinger, it's like, tell me what's going on and in exchange, I will kill you <laughs> or use you until I'm done with you and then kill you. I have a slightly different opinion of Varys. Okay. He is very smart, but I think he is the most cunning Hufflepuff in <gasps> Westeros because, because everything he is doing is for the good of the realm. And he's said it before and people don't believe him because he is very like mysterious, but everything he is doing is shown, I believe him, is for the good of the realm. He wants peace, he wants people to be happy and prosperous. I see that, what you're saying, that he's loyal to the realm, but yeah. I do think that he has way more Ravenclaw traits. I, I like the idea of him being... Uh, you want well. him to be in your house. Well... I want him in my house. <laughs> He's also weird and different, and I think that also is a point for my house. <laughs> Shay. Ah, uh, Shay. Shay is a Slytherin, I yeah. think. I think she's a very smart lady. I think she can seem like a Hufflepuff a lot. And she's ruthless. But, but yeah, she has that ruthless attitude. She doesn't take shit from anyone. I don't think that she wasn't in love with Tyrion. She, was. she definitely was. She definitely was. But I think even the way that their relationship started kind of had a Slytherin attitude towards it. Mm -hmm. And then obviously they developed feelings for each other and it's a very sad story. Like, yeah. Shay's story is tragic. I say Slytherin. I agree. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Does a slot? Good. Melisandra, the, the red, red woman. woman. For Melisandra, I put her in Ravenclaw! Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I had trouble with this one. I put... Ravenclaw? Question mark? Yeah. And Slytherin? Question mark? I honestly think she's a Ravenclaw and that is why she gets so upset and down on herself when mm, she's got she it wrong. wrong. Yeah. Because she's put so much faith in her intelligence and her ability to interpret the Lord's will. As a Ravenclaw, when you get something like that so wrong, it makes you feel worthless. And I feel like <laughs> that's where all her worth lies. In her ability to make these wise decisions to carry out the Lord's will. Yeah. Yeah? Ravenclaw! I'd say Ravenclaw. The night is dark and Full of terror. Stannis the Manus. Stannis the Manus Baratheon. Stannis is a Gryffindor in my eyes. I originally said Gryffindor and I switched it to Slytherin. Stannis feels like he's not driven by pure ambition. He's he, driven more by yeah. the idea that he's meant to be king. That <laughs> this is his destiny. Well, it's also Melisandre makes him believe that kind of it's that his destiny special. to save the kingdom. Yeah. But I don't think he really believes it's his destiny to be king. It's his duty. It's his duty. Yeah. Because he is And he's very rightful, honorable about it. Yeah, he's next in line. He even says, I never wanted to be king. He makes it out to be like he's this victim of responsibility. Like mm -hmm. this has fallen on his shoulders and now it is his duty to get there and he has to get there by any means necessary. The way he carries himself, the way he carries out his kingly duties mm -hmm. is very Gryffindor. Things go too far. <laughs> And he has major regrets afterward. The point towards Slytherin I'd give him is he has that quote of I will not be a page in someone else's history book. I and could argue that for, for Gryffindor. Gryffindor because they want glory. Mm. You know, they want their name to okay. leave a legacy. I'm willing to say Gryffindor from. I think he's kind of Slytherin, but it's that weird kind of gray area. Shireen Baratheon. Poor Shireen. I have her down as a puff. Yeah, she's a puff. Shireen is a she's, puff. She's, she's nice. so sweet. She's so caring. Yeah. She, she always Davos wants to, to help read. people to learn. I love that scene is so heartbreaking in season five and she's like dad what do you need from me i'll do it whatever you need i want to oh, help God, you yeah. and it's the saddest <laughs> scene i love our relationship with davos yeah he's yeah. like her grandpa basically <laughs> yeah. speaking of davos he's next up davos seaworth so davos is the pirate right hand man the to onion Stannis Baratheon. Did you say the Onion? He's the Onion Knight. That's what they call him. That's his Why, sigil. Why, because he has layers? No, because... <laughs> because is it like a Shrek no, thing? <laughs> no. During the, the rebellion, when uh, Robert Baratheon was rebelling against the crown, they had run out of food, and they were eating like cats and rats and stuff, and like and leather. some onions? And so Davos like was a smuggler, and he smuggled in some onions for them to eat, oh. and it saved them from starvation. It's like Sam from Poles. Yeah. I think Davos is a puff. I think so, too. Yeah, he's, he's a puff. He's very loyal, and it's why him and Shireen get along so well. Yeah. Sansa Stark! Sansa. Oh, Sansa. <laughs> I had a great time thinking through Sansa Stark. Yeah. I have Sansa. As a child, she started as a Slytherin, mm. and I would make the argument now she's evolved into a Ravenclaw, wow. and that is where she's at. Wow. I have her starting as a Gryffindor, 
and moving to a Slytherin. How on earth would you think you started as a well, Gryffindor? This bitch okay, was I had so to, I had ambitious to, okay, in the first season. I had to bend the rules a little bit for, for Sansa, but I have a theory. And you'll see when we get to the rest of the Stark children that all of the Stark children started as Gryffindors and each one went to a different house as they evolved. I don't think Sansa started as a Gryffindor. She was too wrapped up in wanting to be queen. Yeah, I guess so. But that was less of like a crazy like power ambition thing and it was more of like she wants that kind of fairy tale and for her life. And... I could see that argument, but she was also kind of mean to her siblings in a way where she was better than them. You know, she made herself yeah. feel like she was better yeah. than her sister a yeah, lot. Yeah, but that does ruin my theory. <laughs> <laughs> I do think she's a Slytherin, though, now. I, I think she learned, she learned from the best I think she's a dark Ravenclaw, and she's learned from the best, but she has a moral compass more than yeah. someone like Littlefinger. And she doesn't want to be queen. That was my main yeah, separation here. but we see in She just s- wants... Six and seven, we do she, see some power. Like she, she does she wants enjoy to make that smart power. Decisions, yeah. And she feels that she knows how to get her family to yeah. safety. And I think she does know because she's hung out with all I these think, people. I think that's more Slytherin-y though than the way she goes about it. I don't know. I think it's very smart the way she goes about everything. It is. She's really intelligent but, now. But there's stuff that she. When it comes to politics, she keeps from John that she doesn't tell. Um, I think Ravenclaw's can do that. They can go dark. But I don't she, think she wants the crown. I don't learned, think. She, I think she's learned no, that she, she the, the heavy weighs the crown. Everyone wants to kill but that she, person, and she just doesn't want it. She wants she, to survive. She's a survivor. She doesn't want the power to be powerful. She wants to survive. I think it's her other qualities of of how she goes about dealing with things makes her Slytherin. I think it's Ravenclaw. I'm gonna stick with Slytherin for Sansa. That's what the beauty of Sansa is. She keeps getting ahead because she's making political connections, I feel like. She very That's intelligently stupid. chooses who she needs. No, I, but I think it's intelligence because she's not doing it for power. She's doing it to survive. She could have, if she wanted power, like gone along with Littlefinger and like ran the year what's it called eerie. the year there, there, there were other chances even when she was married to Tyrion, she could have used that sort of power but she just wanted to get out of there because she knew that was a smart decision she was gonna be in the path of death that's a good argument but i'm gonna stay with slytherin <laughs> joffrey joffrey <laughs> yeah he's a yeah, slytherin he's a fuck off. oh what <laughs> He's a little shit. He's, this, he's so Slytherin. And I'm not saying it's because he's a piece of shit. Yeah. It's because he wants power. He's obsessed with it. He's entitled about it. Sorry, Slytherins, who are going to uh, complain. Joffrey is a Slytherin. <laughs> He'll betray anyone. Where else would you put him? Where else, honestly? <laughs> Sorry. Like, what are you going to make That's the just argument how it for? Works. Like, I can even try to make the argument <laughs> for you. Is he Ravenclaw? Squid. I don't know. He's too dumb to be Ravenclaw. I think the closest you can get is Gryffindor because he's, like, really brash, mm. but he's not Gryffindor. He's not honorable at all and that's no. like a big yeah. Gryffindor thing and then the other one's Hufflepuff are you shitting me <laughs> Marjorie Tyrell I'm gonna say Marjorie is a Ravenclaw mm. and I think she is one of the more Slytherin Ravenclaws when it comes down to it she has a more of a moral compass and more of a wiseness to her decisions I think all of those make her a Slytherin she's very smart like she is doing everything she can to move up she's very good at it I think that makes her a Slytherin mm. Renly and Joffrey and now Tommen it's like she will do argument. anything yeah. She wants that power. I'll give you Slytherin there. <laughs> Loris. Loris. I have Loris down as a Slytherin. I think that he is weirdly ambitious, but he's not smart enough to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I had trouble with Loris because we don't get to see like a huge amount yeah, of him. Yeah. So I said Gryffindor. I think he leans towards Slytherin to me just because of the way he talked to Renly. What he encouraged him to do made him Slytherin. Yeah, you could say Slytherin. Alana Tarot. Queen of I am going to say Elena is a Ravenclaw. Yeah. I want her in my house. She's I think she's very wise. She's I think really... she's more driven by like what's best for her family, what's the smart decision, than what's the powerful decision. She's a Ravenclaw. I just right. love how she categorizes everyone around her because she's oh, yeah. always on point. She's so witty. Brienne. Brienne of Brienne Tarth. Brienne of Tarth. I love Brienne of Tarth. I've <laughs> always <laughs> loved her, but I've really come to appreciate her in this rewatch. And she's a puff as well. Puffle puff. Mm, I said Gryffindor. Oh, I think she's a puff. Oh. She is loyal AF. That is her defining trait. Yeah, that's a good point. She's kind. Yeah, she's a Hufflepuff. She's a Hufflepuff. Yeah. Podrick! Podrick. He is king of the puffs. I love Podrick. <laughs> Podrick's so great. Podrick is the puffiest puff of puffs. Yeah, Tyrion even calls him the most loyal of squires. <laughs> he is the most loyal of squires. He tries so hard. He works so hard. Even when he sucks at what he's doing, he tries and tries until Brienne is like, what the f*** are you doing? <laughs> the house.
The Hound. So I had a good, long, hard thing this about is, The Hound. The Hound's tough. And I have a Gryffindor for The Hound. He's an honorable guy at heart, I think. Yeah, it's... And he's been he worn like down by society. But I think, at its core, he wants to do the right thing. The Hound raised in any other house would have been, like, a much Very more better Gryffindor. person. Because he has those qualities, but yeah. they've been kind of twisted by yeah. his family I don't think family, he's ambitious. Brother. You know, and I think not, he just think, wants yeah. to live his life. I, yeah, I guess I'd put Gryffindor. But there's a lot of Gryffindor qualities that he, he doesn't have, so it's kind of hard to... Like, I, I said squib. <laughs> the mountain. The mountain. I put he's a mindless piece of meat. <laughs> I have Slytherin question? Uh, yeah, so it's just like Slytherin. The reason why I had somewhere to put him was that he stuck his brother's head in a fire for borrowing his toy. Arya Stark! Arya Stark. Arya is a Ravenclaw through and through in my head. She is so smart. She has no want to be powerful. She just wants revenge. I have, she started out as a Gryffindor, like you said, mm -hmm. but she has evolved into like full-blown Ravenclaw. I can get on board with Sansa as a Slytherin, but she is not Slytherin. You can cut out my theory because I messed it up. I said Sansa went from Gryffindor to Slytherin, but I said the same thing for Arya. She yeah, went from I think she went Slytherin. from Gryffindor to Ravenclaw. She's very different. She wants to be different she wants to be unique and i think that's another thing like she's willing to just be who she is even if it's considered weird but she has a and lot she's of ambition very smart in her. i don't think she has a lot of ambition to I be drove powerful her to go well no but, at all but you can have ambition towards other things and i think she's striving to become the best of herself and but in like a weird crazy killer way i still think her core traits are unique and intelligent. That drive that she has, that, that sent her to Bravos to, to go with the faceless men, to study I think that's Cereal. her, like, Gryffindor drive yeah. in her. I think she's a cross from Gryffindor to Ravenclaw. I don't know, I would say Slytherin. Arya's Arya. my Ravenclaw queen! <laughs> I've been waiting for this one. Samuel Tarly, Samuel Tarly. is a Ravenclaw. I am no. claiming him right now. No, no, no. Yes, no. he desires knowledge. He's so curious. He wants yeah. to be a maester. He wants to know more. He wants to read and read there, and read. There's an argument for Ravenclaw. There is a good argument for Hufflepuff. There's an Samuel argument Tarly. for Hufflepuff. We are dealing with a Neville Longbottom situation. I could see the lines to Neville Longbottom, but I think Samuel is smarter than Neville Longbottom. Sam is very smart, and he likes his books, and he likes reading. And I I think but, it's it's buried underneath his clumsy inability yeah. to do sports, but I think he's a Ravenclaw. Mm -hmm. The foresight to be a maester is such a Ravenclaw. Yeah, but Sam we hear in season one and, and many other times from himself and from other people, he's always called a coward and he always calls himself a coward and he can't fight, he can't swing a sword and he's afraid of, of any kind of conflict. But whenever he's put into a situation when there's no other choice, he gets that bravery and yeah. he defends and takes care of Gilly. He stands up for himself when he really needs to. He killed a White Walker. I still think though that He's Ravenclaw. I think that Ravenclaws can be brave, but I don't they think can. it's his defining trait. I think he's defined by how he grew up not fitting in with his family. He was never accepted. Yeah. He was always like weird and different. That's another like Ravenclaw thing. And I also think that he enjoys knowing like and yeah. being knowledgeable about everything. I see, I can see the argument for Gryffindor. I just think it's stronger. I, his essence is stronger I, for Ravenclaw. He is a Gryffindor. <laughs> Everyone we've disagreed with, vote in the comments. <laughs> I do want to hear. They're no, definitely going to be like, it's a completely different house. You're both wrong. Gilly. Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's easy. We're, in, we're in agreement. Good. We're in agreement. We're back to agreement. Bran Stark. Bran Stark. I have Bran Stark as a Gryffindor jock. Jock? Just in general. He's like this sort of jock style kid. He's one of those characters that I have as transforming as originally Gryffindor and he, over the I years, he transformed to I still think his personality is Gryffindor. He doesn't really want this. It's been thrust upon him and he feels like he has to, it's his destiny, be the three-eyed raven. I don't think it's because he wants all this knowledge. Hmm. Okay. I'll agree Gryffindor. But until when he makes that full transition to mm -hmm. the Three-Eyed Raven, I think he loses part of himself. And he's I think when no he's the Three-Eyed Raven, he's not him anymore. Yeah, he, uh, he's almost not even Yeah, him. but he's I think Bran Stark. Stark is a Gryffindor. Yeah. Rick and Stark! Rick on, Rick on Stark, uh, the hero yeah, of the I, show. I have Rick and Stark as a Hufflepuff <laughs> with no personality. He's a squib. <laughs> he <laughs> honestly isn't part of anything. <laughs> he's just Like, there. every Stark gets their own, like, really long, complicated <laughs> character arc, but Rick and gets oh. nothing. He does nothing, he says nothing. <laughs> Rick on says a lot of things. He, he just... says, come shaggy dog. <laughs> you shaggy dog. Hodor. Hodor is a puff. Hold the door. Hodor well, is a sweet puff. He's a puff. He's a Hufflepuff. Egret. 
Egret. Egret. Egret's a Gryffindor. Yeah. She's very Ginny Weasley. Yeah. Tormund. I love Tormund. Tormund's great. Tormund's a Gryffindor. He's a Gryffindor. He's a Gryffindor. He's a Gryffindor. <laughs> the next person on the list has the best name of any fictional character in any medium. Beric Dondarrion. I'm always like, who the hell Beric is Beric Dondarrion? Dondarrion? One of my favorite Tell characters. Us who he, is. he is the leader of the Brotherhood Without Banners. The Lords of Light followers. Yeah, he, he follows the Lord of Light. He's been revived He's six times by Thoros. He's the guy who gets killed and then rises from the dead like a second later. And yeah. Like, hey, yo. And he's a Gryffindor. Gryffindor. Yeah. The other one you're uh, obsessed with? Thoros of Mir. Another Thoros great Muir. character. Okay, so Thoros of Mir I had a good think on. And I think he's more of a Hufflepuff. I agree. Okay, cool. I, I say the same thing yeah tywin lannister tywin, tywin is a slither and through and through I said, he's very very ambitious and proud i said ravenclaw tywin he is smart but he's a smart he's slytherin so he is, are i smart. mean i guess i guess i could say slytherin because he's ruthless he'll do whatever he needs to to keep his yeah. family on top That's a good like point, he's yeah. a slytherin Tyrion lannister Tyrion. definitely a ravenclaw Tyrion's a ravenclaw Tyrion is a ravenclaw for sure yeah. he drinks and he knows things <laughs> theon Greyjoy is the biggest slytherin fail like he yeah. wants to be a slytherin but he's sucks at it. He wants to betray people, but he's not smart enough or capable enough to make it happen. I, I agree. That's exactly what he is. He's on a road to redemption. He's going to bloom into a glorious Gryffindor. A Gryffindor? Yara Greyjoy. I love Yara Greyjoy. Oh, yeah. She's amazing. She's a Gryffindor. I said a Gryffindor I slash Ravenclaw. She, she doesn't hesitate to go after what she wants. Yeah. She just does it. Yeah, I'd say she's a Gryffindor. Bronn! Bronn is my favorite <laughs> Slytherin. Yeah. He's great. <laughs> He's always a joy to have on screen, I, I feel love like. Mm -hmm. Tommen! Little Tommen. Aw, oh, Tommen is just a <laughs> little Hufflepuff of innocence. Yeah. <laughs> Poor kid, he's in way over his head. He's so cute. Every time he talks, I'm like, oh, Tommen. And every time he deals with his mother, like, he's getting smarter about her, but he still lets her have her way. He lets everyone have their way. Yeah. He's just like, I... He's like, I just want to be nice. I want everyone to be happy and rainbows. Oh. Finally, we've made it. Sir Pounds! For some reason, the cat that shows up in one episode named Sir Pounds, John has insisted. It's He's on important. This I list. only, I, I had to cut some other characters, but I only kept the most I know, important. I said that he and Tomlin get along so well because they're both puffs. I would say Sir Pounds is, is a helpful boy. He's a good boy. He came up to the bed and he wanted pets, and <laughs> he seems like a good cat. Jacqueline Hagar? Is that how you say his name? <laughs> Jack and Hagar. <laughs> a man has no house. A man has no name. So why is his name? Jack and I got. I think he's a Ravenclaw. A man has no house. A man is a Ravenclaw. A man anticipates what every other man is going to do. The waif. Okay, this bitch. Is this the bitch next to him? Uh, yeah. I think this bitch is a Gryffindor. She, you have to rein her in from acting on her impulse at all times. A girl has no house. A girl is a Gryffindor. She scares the crap out of me. When I see her, I cower. Please don't hurt me. I'm just a friend. Woon Woon. Woon Woon is a giant that we see in one episode. No, we see him in many episodes. Oh, Woon Woon is a giant that we see in some episodes. <laughs> but, I put Woon Woon as a Gryffindor. He's a Gryffindor. Oh, my boy. My boy's next. Ugh, you're on Greyjoy. Yeah, this I am piece the storm of shit. Brother. He's a Slytherin. Yeah, he's horrible. I hate him. He's a horrible person. That episode, with, I'll never forgive him for that episode with the boat. Jamie Lannister. Jamie Lannister. You know, I think Jamie's a Gryffindor. Yeah, hey, Jamie's I tough. think when it comes down to it, Jamie Lannister is a Gryffindor. He's very loyal to his family. He has been misguided by love. I think he cares about people. He cares about doing what's right. I think he's evolved. Maybe he started as a Slytherin when he pushed yeah. Bran out the window, but I think he's evolved a lot throughout the show. I think Jamie is one of, if maybe not the toughest character to put in he's a single He's had house. a really intense character arc. Yeah. It would almost depend on what season you're watching. I think he's a Gryffindor. I think he always goes after stuff without much thought. Like, he's smart. Yeah. But he'll do stuff on impulse. His plans sometimes backfire like Gryffindors do because he does stuff on impulse. Like, case see. in point, his hand. He had this great plan. <laughs> he had very good intentions with it. And then he didn't see if they were just playing him. I, I put a secret Hufflepuff raised to be a Slytherin. But I could see Gryffindor, I think actually. he's a secret Gryffindor. Yeah. yeah. Cersei Lannister. Cersei, Cersei is such a Slytherin. Oh yeah. It's ridiculous. There's really no other it's choice. It's ridiculous. Jon Snow. Jon Snow. The most Gryffindor Gryffindor. He's a Gryffindor. Also no real other choice. He is the poster boy. Yeah. Him and Ned. Him and Ned together. Like father, like almost son. <laughs> yeah. Daenerys Targaryen. 
Daenerys. Danny. There are a lot of arguments to be made for Danny. I have ultimately landed on. You guessed it. Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw. I think there's an argument for every house. There is an argument for every house. I think that ultimately she does take her time and think things through and then make a really good badass plans with everything that she does. She makes mistakes like anyone, but like she'll take people in. She takes everyone's input. You know, I love mm -hmm. that she has everyone at her table. She brings people from each side. And I think it's very, very smart because she doesn't have that much experience. So she will take what everyone says and then make a very informed decision with everything she does. Yeah, I'm still almost undecided. I think I would lean most towards Slytherin, uh, where she started and where she is now, everything she's acquired and how she's done it. But I think she doesn't have to do a lot of the things she does, and I think yeah. it's because she has more of an intelligent, kind heart, and she does it because she wants to, and yeah. she wants to learn. It's, like, it's staying tough. in Marine was a very Ravenclaw decision. It was like, I'm not ready to do this. It was admitting to herself yeah. that she needs time to grow and become a better ruler. She wants to be the best she can be. She's not just in it to be like, I want power. I'm gonna stay undecided. I really don't know. I put, I literally put all four houses. <laughs> I really don't, I, I don't know. Danny is my favorite character. She has so many aspects to her, but I think she's a Ravenclaw. <laughs> you can take her. I, I don't really know. I don't know what to say. The final character that we have, it is the Night King. The Night King. The Night King is Slytherin. Gods no. What the fuck? The Night King is a Hufflepuff. Why? I have an argument. You want the no. Night King in your house? No, that is not the reason. The reason is he just wants friends. He does not. And he made a he lot of friends. He has friends. Did you he see how many friends he made at Hard Home? All men. Do you know how much like personality you need to make how that many? Been planning to make this <laughs> argument. <laughs> to make that many friends at Hard Home? He, 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 he walks up on the dock and he's like, friends. "Look, John. Look, he John made Snow. Zombies. I just made a hundred thousand friends. How many friends do you have? To add them to his mindless army. No, he's a friend to all." This is such bullshit. No, he's all. This is such like a weird he political like a nice spin <laughs> on the night thing. I'm Christine. I'm John. I make videos every Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye. The night is dark and full of terrors. The Lord of Light will lead us through. <laughs>